So we were analyzing the uh, queue example. Um, let's take again the queue example. And actually, you have to know that this example, and in general, this library has been written a long time ago. Because this library, we started developing this library more than 15 years ago. Uh, so it's not really modern C++, you know, because uh, uh, so many, many years ago, uh, the way to design uh, uh, software was not the same as it is today. And so over the year, the library has evolved a lot. Too. And uh, some of the things that I've, I've ever been doing here has not done anymore in the same way. And in particular, uh, the way I define event is now different. Okay? So if you look at uh, the event class I showed you before, You will see that you have a base class called event and then from here I have a class, a template class which derives from event, which I call gEvent. And what is this gEvent doing? So gEvent is a class which implements a do it function in a sort of automatic way. And in particular uh, uses uh, 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 two pointers a pointer to an object of a certain type x which is a template and a pointer to a function which is a, a pointer to a member function of x so basically g event I specify when I create a g event I can specify uh, a certain um, uh, a certain um, entity and a certain function I want to connect and uh, the G event uh, class is to be used uh, together with uh, a function which is called register handler which basically register a certain G event to a certain uh, member function of an entity now this is more difficult to explain than to actually apply. So we are going to modify this Q event and apply this G event pattern to the, uh, the Q. So I'm going to include here uh, going to include the G event okay which is a, a file which declares this G event class and let's going to look at that so it's into metasim source in source you have everything both the implementation at the, and the either files and uh, this is G event and uh, and here you have the G event uh, fun, uh, class that you can use to construct events. Okay, and this is actually also the implementation. And these are completely a template class, so all the implementation is also in the either file. And you see the register handler function, which takes uh, an object and an event and. Uh, a uh, function I want to point to. So let's try to change now this produce event which I have here into something which is shorter to write. So the sync remains as it is. In the source uh, I have this internal class uh, which I call the produce event uh, which I used only for uh, one single member. So I'm going to comment all of this. I'm going to write the following. Okay. So 
this is the first very simple thing I don't need to define a class okay I just need to define an event and then here when I say prod event rather than do this I'm going to do the following and the function I want to call is produce so I'm going to say okay so now what I want to say is that I register the fact that when a produce event is called it should call the function member produce of this object okay then everything remains the same so I have a much shorter uh, amount of code I have to write because I just write a declaration of the event and a registration of the function I want to call and I don't need to declare a class deriving from public event which is going to overload a virtual function blah 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 this is all done by the template so you can see the template mechanism actually solves a lot of problems let's see if I made some mistake I will try to compile of course I did some mistake and um, yes I forgot to declare random change the way I declare things so. okay okay so I probably was wrong in defining uh, the pmem fun I think I have to write something like this I never remember how to write these things sorry <laughs> I think it's this so address of a member function let's see if it's true The actual error now is somewhere else. Let me find it. So uh, the first error is yes, 69. 69 is here. Yes. Uh, let me look again at the declaration of register handler. So he wants this. And he wants this. Then he wants this. Let me see if I find if I use this somewhere else. looks correct see uh, yeah tell me oh yes I forgot that I have to specify here this so he actually uh, needs a specific prototype here I have to pass an event so let's see if this is true Yes, so that problem has been solved and then I have another problem that there is no more produce event anymore and uh, it's a line 183 yes. so basically I have to change this into
Okay, now compared. And now, of course, uh, it should work like before. Okay, so now we are uh, a much uh, uh, shorter way of writing everything. The, the thing I forgot to say is that uh, uh, if I want to use uh, gevent, uh, I have to be careful because uh, it requires the function, the member function, to take a pointer to event. Okay? Okay. Mm. Of course, I can do the same with service event, and we left left this you to you as an exercise. So substitute service event with a G event, and this is actually very simple. And you can actually do that by using a type def. So basically, if you use a type def, you don't even need to change this. But of course, you have to use register instead of this, and you have to use. Uh, serve that takes an event here okay so this is all pretty simple what else to say about metasim not much i mean everything is uh, is already said and uh, you can look uh, a little bit at the documentation the documentation has been derived directly from the source okay because what doxy doxygen does is go through the source and uh, um, look at comments that start with this okay and it transforms that into html so basically for example this one is uh, uh, the comment that precedes the g event and so this one is reported as it is uh, with a little bit of transformation into the uh, uh, into the HTML file and let's look at it I want to show so basically in the detailed description you will see that you have exactly this okay mm, actually not because it's probably taken somewhere else oh yes no okay and there is also an example okay this has not been translated uh, very well sorry i think uh, i have to change uh, uh, the way this has been uh, have been done that's uh, probably because there is no net interface anymore So this is the other example. Okay. Uh, you can also look at the other examples to understand uh, how you can uh, uh, organize your simulation. The QA simulation was very, very simple. Let's have a very, very quick look to the uh, Ethernet simulation. So basically here, I'm going to start from the main. And in the main, I'm going uh, uh, to define a statistical collision I'm going to count the number of collisions so I derive from a statistical count and I'm going to record one every time a collision has been detected and um, in the main I create three nodes I create uh, I, I establish the destination of the message between the nodes then I create an Ethernet link and Ethernet interfaces for each node. Okay? And then the collision stat, which I attach to the link. Then uh, I can define an output to, to be plotted with the GNU plot later on. And, uh, and then I do a set of uh, simulations for different uh, values of parameters U. So for each U, I compute a few of these. I set the interval of uh, uh, sending of each node as a random var with these parameters and uh, I just run every simulation for five times 
Okay. At the end of every simulation, I write the output uh, together with the value of the parameter. So basically, at the end, I obtain something like this, call.txt, in which I'm going to have the first one is the value of u, the second one is going to be the value of the uh, number of collisions, and the third one is going to be uh, the, the standard deviation of this number. And so basically I can use that, to, for example, to plot uh, how much uh, the number of average number of collision varies with respect to uh, the u, this u value, okay, which is a sort of utilization. Um, and uh, and I invite you to look at the way uh, the simulation has been done. So basically, to look at the different files, there is a file for the link, for example, link. And link is an entity which has just uh, a send a virtual function land send, and then I have class Ethernet, which is uh, uh, contains uh, a set of interfaces and uh, to which it is connected and uh, and has three events and contention event collision event and transmission event and uh, and then a set of interfaces so please let's um, before starting doing the project try to understand how this works and how you can use metasim to simulate uh, things like that. Also because Ethernet is not so much different from what you have to do, uh, I remind you what you have to do. Uh, you have to basically model a set of nodes that communicate in a shared channel, but you have ranges, so you have to understand how to deal with these ranges. And uh, in the simulation, I have to write a very simple simulation in which uh, uh, the nodes transmit uh, uh, horizontally and vertically so you can have collision and try to understand uh, how the number of messages effectively received changes by varying the number of nodes and by varying the sending period. Okay? Uh, Let's see if I forget something. So how to download the library, I told you. How to compile, I just said before. And uh, how the library is organized is also quite clear. Um, okay, this is it pretty much. What is left to be done? Okay, so basically you will surely, some of you will run into trouble by doing this project and don't be ashamed to contact me for help, okay? I will try to respond as soon as possible to you. So if you have doubts or something is not working or if you find a problem also with the library, just contact me and uh, contact my also Yusheng, is available to give you some help. Uh, so don't be ashamed and just try to contact me when you find a problem. Uh, as I said, the library is a little bit old, so some of the techniques that have been implemented are not, uh, uh, let's say, up to date, but the library has been tested several times because on top of Metasim we built a much larger library for simulating real-time system uh, operating systems. And so uh, Metasim has been tested several times. Uh, also, uh, if I find some error, please, uh, if you find some error, please tell me and we'll update the repository with a new version that you can update. Uh, and so we can try to converge uh, both on the library and on the project as soon as we can. Okay. Uh, the library has been just uploaded 
I just tested uh, that it compiles uh, OK, but of course it compiles OK on my computer. So again, as soon as possible, please uh, download and try to compile and test. And if you run into trouble, don't hesitate to contact me. Oh, I forgot to say, how do you write your own simulation? So my suggestion is that you make uh, a, a new directory inside the example in which you are going to develop your project. Okay, and to compile everything, uh, what you have to do is to modify a few files. So um, let's write it here. So which file to modify? To add your own project. Of course, if you're working in uh, Visual C++, C++ uh, you can do whatever you want. So you don't need to follow this, okay? So this is uh, for the one that work on Linux. So on Linux, what you need to do is to go inside the examples. And here you are going to have one more directory. I'm going to show you how to do that. So you do inside the example. This is the set of directory currently inside the example. And you make your own. Okay. Okay. So project initially will be empty. Then you need to modify file makefile.am. Mockfile.am is a very simple one which contains a variable called subdirs and here you need to add your own directory project. Okay. The second modification you have to do is that inside project of course you have to add your own file. So let's suppose your own file is called main.cpp. This is your file and suppose this is a part of your project okay then I suggest you that you copy uh, a file that is found in the other examples so for example uh, from Q there is a file called makefile.am and you copy into this and then you modify And as you can see, this file uh, contains a few variables. And the first variable is uh, uh, telling you which program you want to compile here. And you want to compile a, a program called project. Okay? And this project consists of one single file called main. Okay? And uh, you have to change the number, the name of uh, the executable file, but also the name of these variables as to start with the name of your exec. So if your exec is project, this should be project. This should be project, and so on. The first one is the CPP flags that will be passed to the compiler. And so you can change as you like. I just uh, said that the include files are to be found here. Okay, so I put the path to the include files. And the library that you are adding is this one. And is to be found here. If you have uh, more libraries you want to link, you just add more L specification for the library path and more L specification for the libraries you want to Okay, so we are almost done. 
The last thing that remains to be done, you go into the main directory of Metasim, the one which has uh, so many of these uh, strange files, okay? And you edit one file that is called uh, configure.ac. And you'd say that in addition to the directory already existing, you are going to add one more directory. which is called project okay pay attention that you don't have to put commas here and the last one wants a comma okay so these are all the directories are needed to uh, need a mac file so to summarize you need to write modify the make file sorry modify the make file dot am in examples add uh, your own files to the make file dot am in your directory and then modify configure dot ac okay once you've done this you go to the main uh, directory and you go with the uh, auto reconf configure and make okay and this now inside examples you will find that your uh, project has been compiled and you can run and from now on you can just modify project and change it directly and compile it directly from here you don't need to go back uh, in the main directory and do uh, again uh, auto reconf uh, auto configure and uh, all these things you can only make in your own directory so these things uh, are only needed when you want to add files to your project okay so when you want to add a new directory you go here if you want to add a file you only need to modify this okay so if you want to add a directory what you have to do is to modify a lot of make files if you want to add only files then you only modify your own okay so quite simple and uh, everything should work if you have problems uh, please let me know okay okay are there any questions questions for now okay so I uh, will wait for you next uh, Friday with questions okay <laughs> I expect uh, at least a couple of questions from each one of you <laughs> and uh, yes so last lecture last Friday we are going to have a little bit of overview about software engineering and uh, agile programming okay not very deep uh, just an overview and then we uh, just finish it with the, with the course and um, about the exam 
I'm coming very close to defining it, sorry, but I'm really busy in these days. So in June I'm quite busy as you can see, so probably uh, I will be in Pisa either Friday 7 or Monday 10, June. And then I'm going to be again in Pisa uh, probably on uh, 19 or 22 of July. So for the exam we are going to meet uh, in one of these two occasions, 7 or 10 or both, I don't know, and uh, 19 or 22, okay? Okay, that's it for now. Thank you, and see you next Friday. Bye-bye.